Thank you for joining and welcome to the fourth episode in my single cup guitar build. We've got quite a bit to get through for this episode but I'll go fairly quickly through quite a bit of it. I need to get the tuner holes done, the wiring cavity drilled. I've also got to get the jack socket in, get the whole thing prepped and finished. So let's get all the prep stuff done and then we'll talk about finishing. Now it's time to start applying the finish. I'm going to use a melamine lacquer for this guitar because I want a really high gloss, really durable finish that I can apply by hand without having a setup for spraying. About a year ago I shared a video for how I go about getting a high gloss finish using the melamine lacquer and I had quite a few questions subsequently so what I'll do is I'll try and answer those questions as I go through. The first couple of questions I had were around thinning and sanding sealers so Melamine lac is a cellulose based product so cellulose sanding sealer and cellulose thinners will work with the melamine lacquer. So I'll use a sanding sealer particularly if I'm using colour or I'm using a wood like rosewood or cocobolo where the colour tends to bleed when you apply finish. So enough talking let's get on with it. So this stuff dries pretty fast so I just want to work fairly nice and quickly. Don't need to rush but I just want to get through it at a, a pretty reasonable pace. So now what I'll also need to do that if the rosewood starts bleeding onto the binding I may need to just scrape the binding before I start applying the finish. You'd be forgiven for thinking that Ockermé looks pretty plain when you're working with it but as soon as you start finishing just comes to life and it looks amazing. Okay so I've got three coats of sanding sealer on here and I've sanded it back and scraped the binding because the rosewood did bleed onto the binding. So it's all ready for me to start applying the melamine lacquer and because the sanding sealer has pretty much filled the grain I'm going to apply I think four coats of melamine onto here over the next two days, so two coats a day. Then I'll leave it for a week and come back and start the sanding and, and polishing process. So I thought it might be an opportunity to do a quick recap on this body which is the one that I used for the melamine lacquer tutorial that I uploaded about a year ago. I've had quite a few, quite, well I've had quite a few views on it but also quite a few questions and some people are wondering what it looks like now a year on and specifically whether the finish has sunk into the grain at all because I used the melamine as a grain filler as well. So it hasn't sunk at all into the grain and you may or may not be able to see that on camera but it looks great and it looks basically exactly how it did the day that I polished it up. So I held on to this specifically because I wanted to see how it ages because there's very little out there about melamine lacquer. So if you were interested in that, hopefully that's been helpful to have a look at it a year on. Okay, so let's get some finish put on this guitar and see what it looks like. So first couple of coats are on, those are drying now, which means I can get to crowning and polishing the frets. So that was fun and this is admission time. It's a few weeks later, albeit a couple of seconds for you guys watching, but I had the finish that was all on. In fact, I was doing the last two coats. I spent three days putting a few coats on. And the last day, the morning I came out, it was overcast. It was hot and humid and I knew that I shouldn't put finish on this guitar, but I wanted to get started on my thin line telly, so I just went ahead and did it anyway. And within an hour, of going inside the whole finish had completely blushed 
and I had to wait a couple of days and sand it back and redo it. And I'm always going on about patience in guitar building, particularly when it comes to finishing, but I went ahead and I did it anyway. And I lost about four days in the end having to, to redo the whole thing. So <laughs> it's fine now and it's cured. I can go ahead and, and start the sanding and polishing process, but I do need to start taking my own advice on these things and not rush them. Anyway, let's go ahead and do this because this is the exciting day. This is where we, we start to make it look really pretty. I'm going to go ahead and start sanding. I'm going to go from 800 to 5000 to a medium polishing compound, an extra fine polishing compound and finally a swirl remover. That's the plan. So I'm going to do one fairly quick pass and then give the wipe down because this is the bit where it will give me a good idea about how rough the finish is. Okay, that's not actually bad for a, for a hand applied finish, which is always rougher than a spray finish. It's getting a little bit better each time I do it, which is really nice because that's something I really do try to do. Okay, how about we get this assembled? I got a bit ahead of myself. We need to finish the neck first. Okay, I've just set my neck aside because the courier has arrived and delivered me some top sets that I've been waiting for from a new supplier. So, should we take a quick look at some top sets that I've got? Let's start here. Okay, first up is a Poplar Burl set, which looks awesome. I mean, this is. The one thing I have just realised is that this is going to take a huge amount of prep and a lot of a lot of effort to work it, but it's going to look beautiful. Next is some flame maple. Now this is a really hard one to photograph because it's amazing book match top and very even, but it just doesn't look like it on camera or in pictures. I'm going to move it around to a few different angles and you might hopefully just kind of catch it. And finally just a much more subtle poplar burl, but it's got a really pretty grain that's flowing up this way and this way. It looks really elegant and I really love that in a, in a top. So there we go, that was a quick detour, but I wanted to show you because I get excited. So let's find out how much this is going to transform under oil. I'm actually just going to get a fair amount on and then I'm going to rub it in with some 2000 grit paper. Okay, everything I need is there. So Time to get all of that onto here. So I'm almost ready to get the strings on and do the setup now, which I can't wait to do and to play it. But I do need to take some time just to get the nut as right as I can get it before I do the setup. Oh, and for anybody wondering, I did say that I was using white binding because I'm going to use white humbuckers in this guitar. And I did try the white set that I've got, <clears throat> but they just didn't look, it just didn't work. So I swapped them out to chrome humbuckers and mocked it all up. And it just looked wonderful. It looked how it does now, which I'm really, really happy with. Okay, that's my fret line. I can see that it's a long way from where it needs to be. I haven't adjusted anything yet, apart from my rough guesstimation about where I could start. But I just want to get this tuned and just have a go. <laughs> Any 
you kidding? <laughs> okay, right. I'm going to stop playing and, and get it actually set up right now and then I can uh, really have a good noodle. Success! Actually, it's very quiet, which is awesome. Uh, so I don't think I've made... I don't think there are any issues with the electronics at all. Okay, I couldn't resist. I've broken out the Black Star. I just wanted to hear what it sounded like through my valve amp. So I'll do a run through of some picking and some chords just on clean setting, completely clean, because that's really how I should do a guitar demo. But then I'll add a little bit of hair to it just with a boost. And then I'll have a little play with a bit of gain on the amp, a lot of volume and a lot of boost. So I'm not going to talk through the demo because it's going to be quite loud. I'll have to turn the input gain down on the camera. It's also just the camera audio, so I really don't know how this is going to come out, but we'll give it a try.
well I really hope that came out okay on the camera I'll find out as soon as I go upstairs but in the room that sounded fantastic it's exactly what I wanted it to sound like so I'm going to play around with the pickups a bit because they're new to me but these are Alnico 4 fairly low output PAF sort of output humbuckers and I love them so far definitely I'm definitely going to get some more of these so anyway that is the Rosewood single cup build I need to, to come up with the name for it but the next thing I have to do is to get my telecast and my thin line telecast finished and I've got to start my build for my collaboration with Todd so I need to design my dream version of a Strat and that will be out soon so as always thanks very much I really appreciate all of the support you guys give me in the comments and the likes and I'll have a new episode of something very soon There we go.